back to lecture number six, part three, if you're watching it on YouTube or if you're watching it later somewhere else, like on Twitch. So I wanted to go through like five, six important pathways um, because they are ubiquitous and or at least in, in, in uh, multicellular organisms and they are important um, because if anything is wrong in these pathways, they all deal with primary metabolites. So if anything goes wrong here, um, then you die, right? Because primary metabolites, they lead to death if you can produce them. So the first pathway that I wanted to look at is the glycolysis pathway, the citric acid cycle and the respiratory chain, right? So that's what you see here. Um, so the goal of this pathway is to the degradation of glucose to produce ATP. So the energy production in the cell. Um, so what happens is we have glucose, which is more or less a, a sugar molecule. Um, this is in glycolysis, which is a small pathway in itself, is transformed into pyruvat, and pyruvat is then the, the uh, enzyme pyruvat dehydrogenase, which is just a molecule within the mitochondria, um, makes pyruvat, it ex excretes CO2, and then we get a molecule which is called acetyl-CoA. So acetyl-CoA can be transformed into fatty acids, and fatty acids can also be transformed into acetyl-CoA, right? Because the mitochondria can use uh, both sugar as well as fatty acids to power the cell. So acetyl-CoA then is in the citric acid cycle is more or less being reduced, and also this process produces CO2. It produces H2, and this H2 is then together with oxygen um, in the respiratory chain. So um, H2, hydrogen 2, is more or less being burned into H2O. And in this process, we have an ADP molecule plus PI, plus a phosphor molecule, which is then transformed into a loaded ATP molecule. The ATP molecules are then transported to where they are needed in the cell and expanded when it is required. So it is the process. So three steps in the process, so going from glucose to pyruvate, pyruvate is then turned into acetyl-CoA, acetyl-CoA can also be directly obtained from fatty acids, um, and then had the uh, citric acid cycle produces more or less H2, which is not a molecule that can exist, but had because of the mitochondria, they because two hydrogen atoms can bind together, um, but this H2 molecule then is kind of burned in the respiratory chain using or transforming ADP into ATP, which is then used to power all other cellular processes. The next very important pathway is um, the hexomone. Uh, hexose monophosphate shunt. Um, so this is the degradation of glucose for the regeneration of NADPH. Um, so NADPH and um, um, ATP are more or less related to each other. Um, so what happens is we have glucose 6-phosphate, um, which is um, transformed into ribulose 5-phosphate, which is then transformed into ribose 5-phosphate, which can be, so it's a, it's a circular pathway, um, but it allows the cell to extract energy from RNA uh, and ribonucleotides, um, and this, so the ribonucleotides are more or less broken down into ribose 5, which is then transformed into glucose 6-phosphate, which then charges NADP plus into NADPH. So it's loading this molecule with an additional hydrogen molecule. Yeah, but it allows for the degradation of glucose to regenerate NADPH um, from NADP plus, so spent, um, spent ATP. We have the glycogen synthesis and degradation pathway, um, which is for the short-term storage of glucose. Um, so we have glucose 6-phosphate, which is turned into glucose 1-phosphate, which then in turn yeah, is used by UTP. Um, yeah, so what happens is that this molecule here, so this phos phosphor molecule with the oxygens is then coupled to each other, so it makes a chain, so UTP is a carrier which can carry three of these charged phosphate molecules. Um, this can be then be broken down in pyrophosphate, um, but we can also make uh, UDP glucose by taking two of these and then adding another sugar molecule to it. So hey, this, is, this is useful because hey, in a cell needs to be able to store enough energy to kind of um, 
survive, right? So hey, if if for a short amount of time um, no glucose or uh, is is given to the cell, um, then the the cell can actually store glucose as glycogen. Um, so it synthesizes glycogen and it can also degrade glycogen again back into glucose. Um, so it has a very temporary buffer that it can have to store these energy uh, to store energy, um, not as ATP because the ATP storage is relatively limited. Um, um, but have we can store energy as well into glycogen. We then have one of the other important pathways, which is the gluconeogenase pathway, which is the synthesis of glucose from amino acid, lactate or acetone. And this is one of the more important pathways. We again see here the acetyl-CoA, the the pyruvate, right? So this was this is part which we already saw here, right? Pyruvate to acetyl CoA. Um, but here, what is important is that we have this this um, circle, right? Which goes so uh, amino acids can be transformed directly into pyruvate. Um, so pyruvate can be produced from acetone, but also from lactate. Hey, if we have glycerol, we can also use that into the acetyl CoA cycle where we create ATP um, and energy production. So gluconeogenesis is the synthesis of glucose from amino acids, lactates or acetone um, and this is an important pathway for energy production as well. So if you want to know more about these pathways, right, and if you're interested in um, how certain metabolites are being produced and which uh, proteins or enzymes are involved, then uh, go to CAG. So CAG stands for the Kyoto Encyclopedia of Genes and Genome, and it is a database which is full of pathway information. So the pathways, for example, that you can see here, this is the glycolysis, the gluconeogenesis pathway. And what you see here is, um, and, um, let me see, I have a better one. So when we look a little bit more in detail, then everything in CAG is organized by maps, right? So you have a map and this map is more or less a combination of metabolites and enzymes. So hey, in this case, when we look, we see here alpha D-glucose 1P, which is then transformed by two enzymes. And probably one of these enzymes is enough, but there's two different enzymes which can transform um, D-glucose 1-phosphate into alpha D-glucose without the phosphate. Right, so enzymes are always listed in square boxes, while metabolites are listed as these small um, yeah, little circles and of course you have an arrow which goes from one circle so from one metabolite into the other metabolite and the nice thing about CAG is that it contains pathway information it contains information about the compounds about the reactions and about the genes and the proteins involved in these reactions which means that we can kind of start reasoning about if an animal can produce a certain substance or if it can't Right, so the MAP pathway is a generalized pathway, right? So it is not specific to a certain species. So if you look at MAP 00100, which is, I think, the gluc uh, glycolysis glucogenesis pathway, then we see the pathway here. But then if we select an animal in CAG, for example, we select horses, then we can see that when we look at this pathway that we see that some of the enzymes are colored in green and those are the enzymes which are available to the organism so which are coded into their genome so you can argue now or you can more or less reason that horses cannot turn alpha d glucose 1p into alpha d glucose because they miss the necessary enzyme However, they can, they can turn alpha-D-glucose 6P by this arrow into alpha-D-glucose, right? So they, they are able to use this because this protein is there. And of course, this is really useful, especially if you want to make things um, or if you want to look and make designer bacteria that make certain substances, right? Because you can see which enzymes are available in a certain species, see which ones are missing. And especially in bacteria, you can easily add these enzymes, right? You can use a little circle of DNA, a DNA vector, which encodes the enzyme 3.1.3.10, um, right? The, the, you can click on them and get the name and stuff, but all of these things are numbered in a, in a library kind of system, so a kind of Dewey Decimal system. Um, 
So if, for example, horses cannot turn alpha D1 glucose into alpha D glucose um, with the 1P, but they can turn alpha D glucose 6P into alpha glucose. If we then look, for example, at peaches, um, so just a different species, we see that peaches actually lack both of the enzymes. So they are unable to make um, alpha D glucose from um, 1P, but also from 6P because they miss both enzymes, right? So you can see that, that every species has a different availability of different molecules. So the, the metabolic pathways are more or less similar between peaches and horses. But there are slight differences because not every animal encodes all of the enzymes needed for every step. And that is also fine because like you only need to implement part of the pathway because you don't need all of the backup routes that are there, right? But um, very basically, if we look at CAG, we can reason about if a metabolite can be transformed into another metabolite by looking at the availability of the enzymes. And, the, and the, the map itself is the more or less generalized overview, which is not specific to an animal. But if we then look at, for example, horses, we see that horses only have a certain amount of uh, molecule, or only a certain amount of um, not metabolites, but a certain amount of proteins or a certain amount of enzymes to transform the metabolite into another one. Well, for example, peaches cannot do this because they lack this uh, metabolite, uh, this enzyme. So CAG is the main entry point for things like pathways, or if you're interested in compounds or metabolites, um, it couples these things to genes. It gives you an overview of the enzymes, but it also has a big drug um, part. So if you're interested in if a certain animal is able to break down um, cocaine, um, then CAC can tell you that, right? It allows you to reason about which substance an organism produces or could produce under the right circumstances or given the exact input uh, metabolites. Besides CAG, there's also the reactome. Uh, reactome is very similar to CAG, but also very different in a way. Um, it also contains pathway information. It also focuses on many different organisms. The nice thing about reactome is, is that it's open source. Um, it also provides many download options. So if you want to download like, really nice pathway pictures that you want to, for example, overlay your own data on, then uh, reactome can, can allow you to do that. But the thing about reactome is, is that they're their overview is much higher, right? So they, they are not looking at individual metabolites like CAC does, right? So metabolite, um, enzyme, other metabolite, and then had this other metabolite enzyme. So they are looking at a much, much higher level. So they have like pathways which are called um, immune system, or they have a pathway which is called reproduction, right? So they have a much more uh, higher level view of pathways. They do allow you to drill down, but not to the level of detail that CAG does. Because CAG is born more or less from a chemistry um, background, while reactome is more from a molecular biology slash biology background. So they have a more kind of global view. Besides that, if you are very interested in uh, the human metabolome database, so this is based on the human metabolome project, um, has, so this contains all of the information. So it, it lists all of the different small molecule metabolites that are found into the human body. And the nice thing here is, is that you can actually search um, by mass spectrometry profile. So if you get a certain mass spectrometry profile, then you can just use this profile to search through the database to see if it's a known small molecule metabolite in humans or not. Um, so it's a very useful website when you are investigating, um, for example, did this person use a certain type of drug? Because hey, you can take a little bit of blood, throw it into a mass spectrometry, get a profile, and then using this profile, you can search through the human metabolome database to see if a certain drug or a certain thing was used by the sample that you're currently looking at. So I wanted to talk a little bit about visualization tools because like CAG and Reactome, they provide these static pictures of pathways, right? So only when a pathway is known and well studied does it end up being in CAG um, or in Reactome. But of course, when we want to make our own pictures of networks and 
and metabolites or proteins or enzymes and if we want to make a kind of a, a picture ourselves, then we can use cytoscape. So cytoscape is an open source tool um, that allows you to visualize complex networks and integrate any type of data. So Cytoscape is used a lot in bioinformatics, but it's also used in social network analysis. So, for example, to visualize um, your friends, right, and the friends that are the second circle, so friends of friends or family trees. So you can use a lot of things um, or you can visualize almost anything that you can express as a network using Cytoscape. So it also allows you to do analysis like semantic web analysis. Um, semantic web is the way that on an HTML page you can have structured data and this structured data can also be visualized as a network graph. And so for example you have a person, this person has a job and this job is being done at a certain department. At this department people are working not just the person that that is the current one. And so it allows you to build up these really nice pictures about um, anything that you can more or less visualize in a 3D network. Um, so it is a really useful and, and handy tool. So I just wanted to show you guys some, some things that you can do with it. Um, so one of the things is that when you look at Cytoscape and you start it up, this is a really older version, then you get this welcome overview and then you have several options to get access to these metabolic networks, right? So you can just give it your own network file so you can just make your own network file and then use that to visualize it. Um, but and you also have access to all of the big databases. So hey, if I want to, for example, look at certain um, uh, pathways in, in say elegans or in humans, and then by clicking these buttons, you can directly download the whole metabolic pathway for, for example, gluconeogenesis in humans. So for example, if we use a network file, then there are certain things that we can do with it because Cytoscape has a lot of options to, to change the visualization. So here we can go to the layout. So layout allows you to change the layout. And if we do that, then in the control panel, we get a network, a style and a select. So in the style tab within the control panel, you can change the style of the network and you can, for example, highlight certain things or you can make that arrows look little, uh, look different from what they looked before. So how do I use that? So if I click on the style tab, right? So a network is connected of nodes and edges, right? So a node is more or less a, 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 a thing and an edge is something that connects it, right? So a node can, for example, be a person and an edge can, for example, be a relationship of this person. So you can have many different types of edges, right? Because a, a person has a father, it has a mother, but he can also have friends and he can have uh, family, right? Or they, people can know each other very superficially. The same thing holds for these uh, nodes, right? Because nodes can also consist of different types, right? So we can have different types of nodes and we can color them and highlight them in different ways. So how do we do that? Well, we have the style tab. So when we click the style tab on the bottom, we see here node, edge and network. So node defines how nodes look like. So we can, for example, set the fill color of a node um, to, a, to a, a, a defined color. But we can also use a mapping, which means that based on the type of node, if it is a person, we can color it blue. But if the node is, for example, a, uh, a location, we can color it yellow, right? So you can make, you can visualize literally anything that you can think of using Cytoscape. And how to do this? Well, you can use the style tab and in the style tab, you can set all of these things like how do I want a node to look like? And do I want that look to change based on the type of the node or other node information? Um, the same thing holds for edges and the same thing holds for networks. So network holds kind of global settings, like what is the background color of the network. Um, but the, and the edges can also be like, do I want to have an arrow? Do I want to have a double arrow? Do I just want to have a line? Um, do I want to have a dotted edge? So nodes are the kind of main hubs and edges connect nodes together. So. The nice thing about Cytoscape is that it has more or less the easiest input format ever. Because everything that is being inputted in Cytoscape consists, so the network itself consists of 
a three uh, a, a three column matrix right so we have the name of the first node then we have a top so a, a tab character then we have an edge and then we have another top and then we have another name of a node right so if I would write down node one top edge no a top node two no two top edge top node three and I would load it into Cytoscape then Cytoscape would visualize it like this right so node one is connected to node two node two is connected to node three if I wanted node one to connect to node three I would just change node two here to node three and then this arrow would not point to this but it would point to there right it's it's the really the easiest input format ever so it's a it's a how do you call it? It's kind of a, like a NoSQL database. So it's uh, it's it's just a three column format. So it's it's from um, so it's it goes from um, the the origin um, relationship um, target origin relationship target. Good. So I don't want to talk that much more about Cytoscape because I think there is an assignment about you guys just using Cytoscape if you guys want and I have Cytoscape installed I can actually probably show you some Cytoscape magic and in, in how you want to uh, s uh, do that I haven't set that up and like I said last time you should never do a live demo or something like that but um, if you guys want um, then actually I can I can just show you a little bit of Cytoscape and Cytoscape is really really handy right so if in the in the future um, you need to visualize some kind of a network um, then you can use Cytoscape for that all right so let me then just set up Cytoscape right and um, add a new just a little view yeah and that's not an issue so we still have like 25 minutes left so let me do a window capture and then here we have the window capture for Cytoscape so this is Cytoscape in real life right so when you open it up and I already clicked on uh, OK um, wait a second that's that's way too wide all right so let me do it like this right so this is this is Cytoscape and the way that it looks so first we need to have an input file right so I'm just going to create a very basic input file like the one that we had so let me show you guys notepad plus um, plus and then of course Cytoscape needs to go to the back so I'm just going to create an input file so I'm going to say Denny um, then I need to have a top character which I actually don't have so let me see if I have a top character anywhere um, yeah loves Oscar all right Oscar loves food um, apples are food um, mm, uh, Oscar sleeps uh, Oscar likes um, ah who is food for Oscar that is a good one so um, that means Oscar eats hoop right hoop eats um, food something like that right so had just building up a network so we have a node a relationship and then another node and then we have Oscar so have, we can just build up a network so let's save this network somewhere um, so I'm just gonna save it on the D drive so I'm just gonna call this network test I don't know if you need a specific extension all right so let's go back to Cytoscape um, and then in Cytoscape we're just going to say file and you guys oh you guys can't see Cytoscape so um, we're just going to say file and then we're going to say open and then let's see if it opens up the basic network here um, I called it network test open it up and then it says that it cannot open it because we just say no we want to import a network from uh, a table right so we are going to select our input type and then we're just going to say network.test we're going to open it up and then we're going to say the source is in column one the interaction is in column two and then the target is in column three. Oh, you guys can see that ah, that's so horrible that I can't capture the overlays um, 
let me make a screenshot for you guys. So just so that you guys can see what I'm seeing. So this uh, new don't save do it like that and then I'm just going to show you the paint window uh, no capture that's one of the drawbacks of uh, so when you when you click on network from uh, file then you get a, an, a picture which looks like this right so I just say well load in the network dot test um, the interaction, the source of the interaction is in column one, the interaction type is in column two, and the target interaction is in column three. And then it will say here that columns in blue will be loaded as edge attributes. So if I want to add additional attributes to every edge, then I can add it as additional columns. Right, but um, let's just go back to Cytoscape. Um, not that one is the. All right, so when we go back to Cytoscape and I just press import, all right, then it imported it successfully. So it shows me that this is the kind of network that it creates, right? So food is central, then we have Hoop, we have Oscar, and we have Denny, right? And now I can go to the style tab and I can start modifying it. So I can just say layout, um, no, I can go to VizMapper. So they renamed it to VizMapper. And then I can just take one of the pre-existing network styles. Um, like, why doesn't it apply that? Doesn't matter. So first things first, um, we want to color the edges, right? So the edges, we want to have different edges for the types that we just defined. Because we have uh, love, oh, loves, sorry. Um, we have love, we have R. We have eats and we have um, these kinds of things. Yes, so that's what we're going to do, right? So we're going to change um, the um, the edge line color, uh, edge line style. We can double click and now we have a mapping on the edge line style and I want to say, well, the interaction, I want to do have a discrete mapping why does it based on the ID? No, cannot name. Let me see. It's been a little while, and this version. Why is this not working? Edge line style. Based on this. Go to the default one. All right, I'm just going to create a new vis visual style. Just call it something, right? So now we have an empty visual style, and now we can start styling it. So the edge line style, I want to based on the mapping type. I want to have a pass through a discrete mapper. Um, let me see. Edge attribute browser. Why does the edges not have an ID? Uh, edge. Why are the colors also not there? Edge label color. No, I don't want to have the edge. Ah, I hate the fizz mapper thing. Um, select edges. No. Open fizz mapper. Yeah, I have my fizz mapper open. So now, let me see, let me actually say that the... So I want to first show the nodes and I want to show the node name. So not the border color, not the font size, the label color, position width. Why is that? Oh. Why does it not allow me to do... Because the edges don't seem to have IDs, so I'm, I'm a little bit confused why it doesn't show me any... Because normally when you select one of these, then it should be... Hmm. Let me... Um All 
All right, so you guys can see that again because there's again like a pop-up that pops up. Why is that not showing? I think it has everything on white or something. I don't want to import. Let me let me try this again. So I'm going to import my network from a table. I'm going to import the file that I just made. All right, and then I'm going to say column one, column two, column three, import. All right, so then we get this network. When we have this network, we can then apply. It actually doesn't even apply the visual style at all. Delete visual style, yes. All right, so now we're back to the default style. And now what I want to do is I want to change stuff. So I want to change the node shape into a triangle, apply and apply. Yes, so that works. Oh, this is just a browser. Um, this is so useful. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm bumbling around a lot. Um, but the weird thing is, is that I, I can only change the, like this thing here, the default. So when I click on it, I get a pop-up, but you guys can't see the pop-up, which is just annoying as hell. Um, let me do it slightly differently because I am just going to capture the whole screen. Um, so I'm just going to do not a window capture, but a display capture. So add a display capture. All right. So this is the whole thing. That's good. Then you guys can see my screen, which is fine. And then let me just put that thing on top. All right, let me close down all of the other windows so we know more or less what we're doing. And then this one can go as well. This one can go. And that one can go. All right, so you guys can't see me now, but that's okay. All right, so we're, we're here, right? So let me open up Site Escape a little bit. So when I click here, now you see the pop-up, right? And now I can say nodes. So I want to have the, de but I don't want to change the default properties. I actually want to change the properties here. And I want to just use a discrete mapper. And normally it would now show me all of the options that I have. Um, but it, it doesn't give me any way. And if I select an edge, it also doesn't show me the IDs of the edges, which it normally would be like, yeah, because if I would select this one, then it should show me ID is food, canonical name is food. For some reason, it doesn't do that. Uh, you know what? Destroy the whole network view. Go to network. File. Import. Network. From a file. Select the file that I want. Source column, column, one, two, and three, import. Now I want to go to VisMapper. It still doesn't load in the attributes. I can add attributes probably manually, but... Why does it not... Let me try this. So I want to node attributes, select file, Select my network and mapping options. No, is space separated. Column one key attributes. 
second port. I have no idea why this doesn't work at all. No idea. No idea, guys. So, um, I, I will do a demo next time. I will figure out why this thing doesn't do what I want to do. Um, but I'm not going to figure it out live on stream. Um, there's probably some basic step that I'm missing, um, which is just the way that it is. It also didn't look the way that I expected it to look when I opened it up. It might be that I just have to install it. Um, but it's, it's weird because normally what you would have is that you would have a, 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 a style tab. But it doesn't give me the style, it just has this vismapper tool. And this vismapper tool just doesn't allow me to create any pass-through mappings or canonical names or anything. And it, it, it also, when I select the nodes, normally it would show the different attributes for each node. It used to be a very simple tool, but since uh, Cytoscape has been updated to version, like, oh, I'm actually like 600 versions behind. <laughs> Let me actually see what the, oh, the current version is 3.8 and I, I'm trying 2.7, so that's actually not a... Alright, let me... I'm just gonna try it again. We still have like 10 minutes left to the end of the lecture, so um, I'm just gonna reinstall it, see if that will fix anything. Because I used to use it a lot, and it's a really good tool for um, visualizing networks, but the problem with tools is that if they're good tools... Um, Alright, and now I get the Microsoft has protected your PC. Ah, so annoying, so annoying. So you go to properties, and then you say unblock, and you can press apply, and then... Then you can install it. Oh, and now I have to install the correct Java version as well. This is so nice. All right, because I didn't prepare it, right? Um, I, I just made the, the slides like four years ago when I was using a completely different version. Um, but uh, that's just the way it is. Like, never do a live demo, right? That's, uh, that's what people always say. So doing a live demo is a bad thing. If there's any questions, just throw them in chat, um, as long as the question is not, um, how do you do this? <laughs> how do you, uh, how do you use Cytoscape? Other questions are more than welcome. Um, let me actually remove that one as well. I am installing Cytoscape at the moment, so, um, just to see if the new version will, uh, be easier for me to show you guys. Yeah, my, my, the current version that I'm installing is also 3.9, though. So, just having to wait a little bit. Let me actually move this to the question slide so that you guys can uh, ask a question if you want to. I actually didn't even include a question slide. So let's just finish at the overview slide then, right? So, during the lecture, I told you about metabolites, right? Primary metabolites are things which are required for being alive. Secondary metabolites, it's okay if you don't have them, right? You don't die directly. I told you a little bit about mass spectrometry, that it comes into four different steps. I mentioned three here. The first step is compound separation using um, chromatography or electrophoresis. Furthermore, I'm doing fragment, you're doing fragmentation and ionization. The last step in mass spectrometry is doing separation by mass over charge. Furthermore, I showed you three different databases which allow you to deal with metabolites. So if you have mass spectrometry data, you can use the METLIN database to identify the components inside of the spectrum. Um, furthermore, I talked about the CAC database, which is a database which shows metabolites and um, enzymes working on these metabolites and which allows you to reason if a certain animal can produce a certain metabolite, but is also very useful if you do bacterial um, modification, right, to have a bacteria make a very specific component that you want. Furthermore, I told you about Reactome, which is very similar to CAG, um, but has a much higher level overview. And I told you a little bit about visualization and tried to do a demo of Cytoscape, which unfortunately did not work.
but uh, we will do one um, at the beginning of the lecture next week. So from me that's everything. If you have any questions let me know. I will set up Cytoscape and give you guys a demo next week since it's almost four. So that's everything for today. Good. So if there's no question then um, I will see you guys next week and um, thank you guys for staying here. Um, there's um, six people left so that's good so thank you all for being here and um, see you guys next week